Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Janu and I talk about all things intentional and low impact living. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you five ways that you create waste without thinking about it. Now this isn't to shame anyone, this is just to make people more aware. But I just think it's a great way to realize that being low waste is not just about reducing plastic packaging, but there's so many more levels to it that you may not be thinking about it. So today I'm gonna to be sharing five ways that you may not be thinking about the way you're producing waste. So the first thing I don't think a lot of people think about is clothing. So one pair of jeans actually takes 1800 gallons of water to produce like one pair that's crazy and then to produce a cotton t-shirt it takes 400 gallons of water like that's a lot for just one item so what I opt to do is thrift as much as possible because even when you're shopping at a sustainable brand obviously they try to reduce their waste in as many ways as possible but the most sustainable thing you can do is shop secondhand and I found this out I was like whoa like reducing my waste is not just about not using plastic but it's also about the clothes them wearing as well and those make an impact too and how they're made makes a huge impact on the world around me so I would definitely offer thrifting over uh, buying from sustainable brands. I recently read this article that said that eating locally is not the most important factor when it comes to your food and how many emissions it produces and how wasteful uh, it can be it's actually the type of food so Beef, for example, is one of the worst things you can eat. So whether you're vegan or not, that's not what I'm here to like dispute whether you should be vegan or not. But it's just to be mindful of the fact that meat consumption, especially beef, um, really takes a lot of resources. Not only do they have all this land for all these cows, but they also have all this land where they have to grow food for the cows to eat. The cows need to eat food and drink water and like all these resources are going into raising cows. Um, and it's definitely one of the worst things that you can actually do for the environment. Even if you cut down on eating beef and dairy once a week, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions more than buying all of your groceries from a local source, which is kind of crazy. So I do think like buying produce and things like that are important to buy locally, um, but also look at what you're eating in terms of meat if you are eating meat. All these different items have a footprint. Uh, even just like with almond milk, it takes so many gallons of water to produce almonds, which is why I like to use oat milk. Oat milk is easy to make on your own and also if you buy it in the store It's just there's less resources that go into making oat milk and things like coffee beans It takes 1200 gallons of water to produce one 12 ounce cup of coffee, which is mind-blowing I'm not trying to convince people to give up all their coffee But it's just to be mindful of the fact that reducing your waste and reducing your carbon footprint is not just about reducing plastic waste or packaging but it's also about the foods that you're consuming and where they're coming from um, are important as well another thing I feel like people don't think about is when they're buying packages from Amazon now I try not to buy packages from Amazon um, but I'm sure most people do but the whole prime thing and two-day shipping what actually happens is that these trucks that are coming from warehouses um, are actually not completely full because they're trying to get you your packages instead of taking seven days to get your packages so that's enough time to get enough boxes on the truck since you have to get your packages in two days there's empty trucks that are on the road so they're producing all these greenhouse gases and emissions um, when it doesn't need to be as many if the truck was full so when packages are rushed more than often they are flown on a plane and that of course produces even more co2 emissions so there's all these factors that go into to, uh, getting a product to your front door. I know a lot of sustainable brands like sometimes their shipping is it you know two-day shipping It sometimes it takes a week to get to you but it's actually better for the environment that way um, to not get all these items as quick as possible. Um, it's important to realize that by it not coming the next day or two days later it's actually doing better for the environment because then there's more that can be packaged uh, on these trucks. The last thing I feel like people don't think about when it comes to waste is that even if you're shopping in bulk and you're going with your produce bags and you're not taking anything home in plastic the food that got to the grocery store in the first place more than likely came in plastic like I've seen bulk stores where they're refilling the uh, the big bulk containers and they're coming in plastic containers and plastic packaging. I think it's just good to note that even though you are reducing your plastic waste by not bringing anything home in plastic, there is waste that is being produced because these items do come shipped to them in plastic. So it can be very difficult because that's kind of the, the cheapest and easiest thing uh, to receive products in. But I think we need to find ways to work with manufacturers to not have these items come shipped to the store 
course, packaged in a ton of plastic because it's gonna create a ton of waste. There's more than one way to reduce your waste. It's not just about not using plastic packaging, but it can be thrifting your jeans and saving, you know, 1800 or 1200 gallons of water. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.